Hey guys, welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show. We give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today is John Campia. Well, greetings, salutations, everybody. Welcome to the best day movie related show on the planet Earth, coming to you from right here at the Collider Video Studios here in Burbank, California. And say it with me, the winner and new UFC middleweight champion, George St. Pierre. I'm very excited about this. Oh, so here is John Schnapp. Isn't that the dude who was Batrock the Leaper in the Captain that America movie? That is him, movie? as a matter of fact. <laughs> yes. You know this sports stuff? <laughs> hey, I was just listening to Daft Punk in my mind with that Tron legacy, you know. Also, here is Jeremy Johns. I love how you had to bring it on chorus for me. You were like, Batrock? I'm like, oh, that guy. Yeah, the That's Leaper. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just got back from Disneyland. How are you? <laughs> Also, here is Mark Ellis. Yeah, I was going to say, thanks to all the uh, Kawhi fans that came up and said hi to me at Disneyland yesterday, the one person that I thought was a huge fan of mine that did not say hi, Jeremy Johns, was <laughs> at Disneyland. We were. We were at Disneyland <laughs> the same day. Incognito. He was wearing hilarious. goofy glasses and a mustache. I could barely recognize him. It's <laughs> like, oh, Monsieur Ellis. <laughs> 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 and may I say, I recommend the Disneyland chimichangas. I'd never had one before. The rest of my group, including my girlfriend, got the turkey leg. I declined the turkey leg, the giant turkey leg, and I got the chimichanga instead, and I did not regret it. Good stuff. Nice. That, that's, uh, that's marvelous. It's okay. Thought marvelous. it would uh, spiral into a bigger conversation. It ended up not happening. Hang on a sec. Ellis, you know, D Deadpool loves chimichangas. There we go. Yeah. That's the opening. That's Hence the plug. Marvelous. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, we're stretching. Wow. Uh, hey, just because a lot of people are asking me on Twitter, uh, uh, actually, a number of us here got to go see King Kong last night. I know, Schnepp, you yeah. got to see it. What? Wendy went to go see it. A few of us went to go we see were at it. Disneyland. Yeah. The However, place. just because a lot of people are asking us on Twitter, what, how was it? Was it? There is an embargo until tomorrow. Right. So oh, we, will, we will give our reactions to the film tomorrow. And John, so just, just so I understand. Fact. We can't do like smiley face emojis no, or anything like that. There's nothing that we can do. Can I ask you guys, are you guys, do you guys like bananas? We cannot <laughs> answer that question. I can say that I really like certain bananas and some of the other bananas not as much, but most of the bananas are delicious that I have. Okay. Okay. Most of them, in fact, I'd John's almost say. Like sweating over no, here. No, I'm talking it's about. Like Schnepp wakes up every morning and says, "How can I ruin everybody's lives today?" Oh, oh, uh, John. How, can we, how can we all get blacklisted from every single process? Yes, I'm not no saying more. anything. Uh, no more Mark and I were at anything. Disneyland. We have nothing to do with this. Chimichangas. <laughs> all right. Ashley, you're looking right. particularly nerdy and adorable today. Oh, what's you. What's going on first? A new trailer has dropped for James Gunn's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and it finally reveals the identity of Star-Lord's dad. In the new footage revealed, we see the entire team together again, with new additions Yondu, Mantis, and Nebula all in the mix. But perhaps the biggest reveal comes near the end of the trailer, where Kurt Russell's ego, the living planet, was revealed with a nice button and tease promising more. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 drops in theaters on May 5th. John, what do you think about the new trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2? I liked it very much. It's fun. It's funny. It's colorful. Uh, I, one of the things we don't talk about the original Guardians of the Galaxy very much from a cinematography and an artistic point of view is the use of color. And like it's, it's such a rich, vivid motion picture to watch. And you get a lot of that in the trailers as well. I enjoyed it. Not my favorite one that they put out so far. Really cool getting our first glimpse of Ego. That's cool. Now, a lot of people are saying, why are they spoiling the the reveal of Ego, and James Gunn took to Twitter this morning, and he told people, guys, this happens in like the first few minutes of the movie. It's, it's what sets up the movie. It's not a spoiler, uh, so, so don't worry about that. The one complaint, you know what, not even complaint, the one little nitpick I have about the Guardians of the Galaxy marketing up to this point, and you all know how much I'm looking forward to this movie. I love the first one, is that I understand that both Disney, Marvel, and Gunn are trying not to give away too much. And I get that, and I think a lot of fans appreciate that. However, we're now three or four trailers and teasers and TV spots in, and there's I think there's a difference between not giving too much away and not letting us have any idea what this movie's about. Because at this point, after watching this trailer, I thought, you know what, the movie comes out in less than two months now, or about two months. I still don't know the first thing what this movie's about. I know who's in it, I know the characters, the Guardians of the Galaxy are in it, but this far in, I would you'd think we'd at least know, okay, what's this time? Like, in the marketing for the first one, we knew they are going up against this guy, Ronan the Accuser, who's got a hate on for this and this, and they're going to try to save. 
I don't even know what this movie's about yet. And so that's my one nitpick. I like all the marketing I've seen, but it's my one little nitpick at this point. Schnepp, what do you think about the new trailer? I love the new trailer. Actually, I'm glad I don't know what it's about just because I'm all in. So I sort of like the little scenes that they've shown every trailer is just a little bit more from the last trailer. So right. you still see that tentacled creature. You still see a lot of little scenes. Like, And finally, we see uh, Ego. He looks, can't wait to see him as a giant planet, James Gunn, with that beard. That better happen. <laughs> I know it's going to happen because I trust him. Uh, yeah, I, I love the trailer, but that I, I know nothing about it other than that all these characters are in it and Yondu is going to become a guardian. That's all I really know. And Mantis is in there. And That's it looks it. like uh, uh, Gamora's sister. Um, Nebula. Oh, yeah. Nebula. It looks yeah. like she's also becoming one of them, Yeah, too. so I think, I mean, just seeing all those characters and kind of interacting. In fact, the little teaser to the trailer that wasn't even in the trailer where it's just Drax sipping and chewing and eating and everyone's yeah. like, dude, what? And it's like, that was just funny. I just, I love the interactions with the characters. Jeremy, what do you think about it? Yeah, like when you see Drax, he's like, oh, like we're a family. He's like, except maybe her. And I'm like, oh, those two are totally going to hook up later. Right? <laughs> right when they're on Ego, the living planet. You know, I got to say, Kurt Russell looks pretty good for a planet. Like, Unicron never looked that yeah. good. The entirety of Transformers. If that's a planet, then there you go. I'm glad to hear that that happened in the first five, uh, or that happens in the first five minutes of the movie, because that was my one thing. Or why on earth did they show that? Why didn't they save that for the movie? But if it happens in essentially the intro, not that big a deal. I also do agree that we don't know anything about it. I'm with Schnepp on this one. I don't want to know anything about it. Just give me some visual appeal and then let me go into the movie. It is kind of funny that this is the third trailer in now. So it's the third, yeah, right? Third or fourth. Third, it's third, getting yeah. up there, yeah. And, and really, it's just kind of, okay, here's some more Guardians of the Galaxy stuff. And you don't know any more about the plot. And so I walk away from every trailer at this point. This is why I didn't do a video on the trailer. Because I was like, I, I don't know any more or less about it than I did before. It just it looks like fun. And we already knew from the last trailer that some of the baddies from the last one are going to be with them in this one. So they're, they're going to form a bigger group of guardians. But I th this kind of goes to my point where there should be just a couple trailers before the movie comes out. But YouTube and social media, they want to perpetuate and have it in your face all the time. So they're going to come out with a few trailers. And at that point, trailers don't reveal as much as they used to so it's kind of sad but looking forward to the movie what do you think uh this trailer gets all the bananas john you know all the <laughs> drugs and infighting and sleeping with bandmates that went on during fleetwood max making a rumors that all led to this moment 40 years later because unlike the last trailer, i thought the chain fit perfectly with all the action that we saw here and the way that they jazzed up this song played well with the trailer and that reveal at the end of seeing Kurt Russell and he says I'm your daddy or however he delivers that line this clearly was not like it's not it was never meant to be an Empire Strikes Back situation because we saw that at Comic-Con last year we're like oh we got to keep this secret for like an entire year oh you saw no. that yeah yeah we, we they, they showed us a lot <laughs> of stuff at Comic-Con we're like I don't know what we can talk about right. it's cool that, that it's not going to be like this huge mysterious thing in the movie it's going to kick off the action a large portion of which which we have yet to see from any of these cool trailers. They're just throwing a lot of fun stuff at us. So that's my takeaway from this trailer. Much like the other ones I've seen, this is going to be a really fun, fast adventure. I'm so excited about this movie. This didn't enhance my excitement because I was already there, but it's nice to see it. Can I ask you, because uh, you saw the, the the extended stuff they showed at Comic-Con. Mm -hmm. I saw the some... entire movie twice at Comic-Con. So they showed, the, I, th I heard it was three times, but did some of the other cameos that, you know, I don't know if people know about that, that still have not been revealed yet, but they, they showed there. No, they, they mentioned a few other cameos at Comic-Con, but we didn't actually see footage of that. So okay. it's still like, you know, tasty morsels we're going to save for the actual film, I, which, uh, we, we, which I like. I believe James Gunn, too, because if you look at the background for uh, Ego, it's that yellow kind of orbish area, which is what they're like when they're fighting that squid creature. It's It feels like that's the beginning of the movie, so they're not ruining anything. And I, I would love, I love to that. think that like if you're if you're maybe a teenager and you love the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie and your parents didn't go to see it with you and maybe you're in a theater and you're seeing something else, you see this trailer at the end, Kurt Russell comes out and your dad is like, oh, wait, they got Snake Plissken in this thing? Yeah. I'll go see this movie. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a smart marketing play. So let me ask you guys this question. We're two months out now from, mm -hmm. from Guardians coming out, which is actually sooner than, than you think. Yeah. Do you think we're going to get another full trailer? Because it is still two months out. And if so, do you think the next trailer will actually reveal what the plot of the film is? Or do you think they'll stay pretty, no pun on, on words, nebulous about it? Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, you should have intended that. Because yeah. yeah. it was awesome. there, yeah, yeah. fully intended. <laughs> you know what? Um, I think they'll add, they will throw a couple of 30-second spots. Yeah. I don't think they're going to release another full You don't trailer. think we're going to get another full two-plus minute I trailer. certainly hope not. I don't think it needs it, but a couple of spots that might show a, a few key action sequences that might happen in 
in the middle or look, uh, towards the end of the movie wouldn't bother me if they were just quick snippets. So, yeah, I think they'll, they'll definitely show you something more, but I, I certainly hope not a full trailer. Well, I think a full trailer is possible, especially since there was a full trailer for Kong that came out like yesterday. The day before, right, yeah. Right, oh, right. Wrong. So, I mean, who knows how they're, how they're going to do it. I think a full trailer is possible. I don't think it's going to reveal a lot more plot, possibly a plot point or two, but we're not going to know. We, we wouldn't be able to go into the movie and be like, I know exactly what they're doing and why. Just because he snubbed me at Disneyland last year, I'm going against John's. So and I'm yeah. going to say <laughs> that there is not going to be another full trailer. I do agree with Schnapp. There's there's going to be some 30 second TV spots and it's not the biggest challenge in the world for a 30 second TV spot to give us more story than we got from this trailer. So you're right. You could have that. My big question, do they stick with Fleetwood Max the chain? Because pop music is so essential to the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise. You think they stick with the chain or do you think they throw another song I in there to sell throw, us on TV? I, volume two, they throw another song in there just to increase it. If yeah. Slippery When Wet's not going to play itself, dude. <laughs> if they play Raise Your Hands, which was also in Spaceballs, that'd be sweet. That was great in Spaceballs, by the way. <laughs> yes, it was. All right, actually, I'm just curious. You had a chance to see this trailer. Are I you did. more excited about um, it? What it did was, you feel about it? It was fun, um, but what I will sell about it was that we needed more Groot. We saw him <laughs> a couple of times, but we didn't even hear one line. I don't think we heard one, I am Groot. And every time <laughs> I hear, I am Groot, it kills me, and it makes me want to see the movie so bad. So I wish we heard one, I am Groot line. What about you, Wendy? I, I agree, I could always use some more baby group, but this trailer was just okay for me. I was way more excited about the teaser one that came up before with uh, the both of them, with the one Mantis getting like hit over the head with the giant glowing ball, fireball, and where she was like, <laughs> you feel love for her. <laughs> you know, I like those much better, but I am really excited that we got to see Kurt Russell. I was actually surprised that they revealed him. All right, what's next? 20th Century Fox debuted a new trailer last night for Alien Covenant. Ridley Scott returns with a brand new installment in the saga that began in 1979 with the new trailer giving fans exactly what they were missing from the previous installment in Prometheus Aliens. The movie stars Michael Fassbender, Catherine Watterson, Billy Crudup, and Danny McBride and will hit theaters on May 19, 2017. Jeremy, what do you think about the new trailer for Alien Covenant? It is all right. <laughs> you know, no, actually, it was really cool. I, I really liked it a lot. I can't keep a straight face on that one. I mean, Alien Covenant was one, is one of my uh, anticipated movies, most anticipated movies of 2017, and the trailer shows why. Again, uh, I, I, I feel like the... This trailer didn't show us anything we didn't know from the last one. These people go to this planet. They find uh, the then alien things happen, you know? And it, it happens how we saw it happen in the other one. They're exploring, like, oh, what's that sack with that really ominous thing around <laughs> it? Let me put my face down there. <laughs> yeah. Make it a better look. Yeah, yeah, and then bad things start <laughs> happening. It looks like Billy Crudup's going to bite it first because yeah. it looks like that thing latches onto its face. Um, looking forward to it, though. I want to see Ridley Scott's return to Alien and the horror genre that Alien really started, the sci-fi horror thing. Uh, and uh, I, I, I guess there's a scene at the end, Schnepp was telling me, he's like, oh, yeah, they shouldn't have shown something at the end. I was like, great, because I actually ended the trailer thinking the trailer was over. I was like, okay, I saw the trailer. I guess there's a thing at the end that I didn't see, uh, which is great, and because I like the secrecy of trailers, but it looks horrific. It looks violent. It looks bloody. It looks very alien, and I'm absolutely looking forward to this, and I'm glad... Guardians of the Galaxy aside, I'm glad this trailer isn't revealing too much because I want to go in there like, I don't know, I just kind of don't know what it's about except Alien and then have Alien things happen. Although the end of War of the Worlds always has me think every time someone goes to a new planet, I'm like, I feel like the pathogens would wipe these people out. I think that would kill them <laughs> way before the aliens do, and so now I can't help but think about that. That's one of the things I liked about this trailer is that they're on this planet, and they're like, oh, look at all the sweet vegetation. It feels so much like we're on Earth, and they're like, but wait a minute. Something's amiss here. I like that part of it. What makes me nervous, which is what made me nervous in Prometheus, it makes me nervous about the Elon Musk SpaceX thing with two private citizens going to the moon. I hope those private citizens are not a couple because you should not be having sex in outer space. You do not put couples into a space spaceship and instruct them to have sex whether it's in outer space or on a foreign planet because john it does not end well you're stepping on spores you're putting your face in eggs bad things are going to happen now as far as this trailer on a whole i just think you sound a little bit unnecessarily bitter about something i'm not i'm not making any accusations i, I sound a little bit like john lithgow he should have had two jimmy i don't want this rock and roll is. music getting into my town i know what it is if they play Dance the Night Away. They play Dance the Night Away, you can do whatever the hell you want because that song's a magical piece of pop music. Um, as far as the trailer, John, I think they showed a lot. They showed us a lot about this movie, and I do feel 
that they were warranted in showing us a fair amount because we're trying to get Alien back to prominence. We're trying to show everybody that, hey, Prometheus was a setup. We're back to the good Alien horror vibes that we wanted to get from Ridley Scott in this franchise. I love the footage I am seeing. I'm just worried that they're showing us too much of the story. Uh, I think... First, I love the trailer. I think it's great because I'm one of the many people out there who is not so excited about the new Aliens movie after coming off Prometheus. A lot of people did like Prometheus. A lot of people like myself didn't. And I think showing us what they showed us, I think was almost a necessity. They knew there was a there's a good segment of the movie going on each other that they, they needed to get on board with this movie. These two trailers will get you on board for this movie. I am on board. We now we know what the movie's about. And you know what was interesting? They used a clip from that pre uh, prologue or whatever right. it was that's not mm -hmm. in the movie. Right. Right, right. And they used that in the trailer at the beginning. I thought that was interesting. But we know that this is there's a, a new space mission to be the first colonizers of, a, of another planet. It's all couples. They go there. They find something strange. Why is there human wheat here? And there's no animals. And then they come across the aliens, mayhem soon. Now it's a struggle <laughs> to survive. So we know the plot of the film is they showed enough the action to get in. It reminds me of that King Kong trailer they dropped just the other day. The other King Kong trailers were okay. But they think Universal knew or Warner Brothers knew we don't have the audience hooked on this yet. And they put out that trailer. And maybe it showed a little bit too much. I don't know. But... It worked because it got people excited about the movie. I think this trailer does the same thing. What did you think about it? I agree. That last King Kong trailer was showed just enough to get you really excited. And there's more in the, you know, when you see the film, but just like Alien, uh, Alien Covenant. Um, did they show a little too much? For me, the last 10 seconds, I could have done without, but I don't need to be sold on it. John's right. Like, I actually am one of the people who liked Prometheus and, and, and excited to see more Ridley Scott alien films. So I was already on board after I saw that first teaser. And now this trailer is just confirming, oh cool, it's, it's, a, it's a derivation of what we've already seen before it. We know what's gonna happen. I love John's describing the bubbly thing. And let me put my face in it. It's, it's, like, it's in every <laughs> single alien movie. <laughs> right, right. The weird thing. Do it again, please. Do yeah, your, well, do no, your it's version it's of like, explaining it. So the sack it. opens up and like, you just see this thing <laughs> there doing it, that. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, oh. Yeah, let me <laughs> stick my <laughs> face really, in it. Everyone yeah. gets closer. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I don't need, if I see that happening, I'm staying back. Like, yeah, I, I you would be backing, backing up. up. Like, that would be the natural right? reaction of seeing like, somebody smell like? oh, an egg with a living guts and <laughs> right. intestines moving around of its own accord. Right. Hey, there are right. strange sounds coming yeah. from the basement of this abandoned house. Yeah. Let's walk down. You there. must you investigate. Know, is that yeah. a spiny tail? That's not yeah. obvious at all. You know, yeah. this weird egg just opened. I think it's time for me to get a shot. Yeah. <laughs> strange spores coming towards me. Must breathe them in. Right, right. I don't know. I, anyway, I'm 100% on board. I love the trailer. I love. All the scenes in it, even little slightly spoilerish ending thing. If you're watching the trailer, just turn it off. Uh, watch your thing. Like twenty, the last twenty seconds, don't watch it. You to know, be fair, what I will say is this: is like, is that that, that first teaser that they showed? Yeah. Hooked me. I right. love Prometheus, but I needed to see the xenomorph in its full fledged kick ass right form on. again. I needed to see a mouth open and another tinier mouth come mm. out of that thing. That's what I got. So that so I was already hooked. If you weren't sold or you didn't see that trailer for whatever reason, this is going to sell you yeah. on the fact yeah. that we're back to alien. The way that that thing yes. just pounds its head, it's it's the oh, coolest yeah. awesome. the coolest windshield scene I've seen since the counselor with Cameron Diaz. That's right, and <laughs> Danny McBride. So and he's involved in you know, in the windshield scene. And then so. the, then the terminal have one that was did the headbutt on the totally. windshield in the helicopter. Yeah, yeah, the helicopter. Yeah, the helicopter. That's right. Yeah. Out. You know, uh, the, the the whole thing, the plot of this movie is they're colonizing this planet, and then they find uh, they find the sacks, and then the aliens happen. Mm -hmm. There was a part of me that was like, is this a prequel to Aliens when they're the color because. Before aliens, these colonists go to LV. It was four twenty six. Right? There were hundreds of them. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but I mean, you know, it, they they could have been the, the they could have been the scouts, right, right, right. Yeah. And so I, I was like, is this leading? What names on those dog tags? Uh, right. Do we got to zoom in and find Ooh. out? But I don't think it is because there's vegetation here in the L, LV four twenty six. It was, was pretty desolate, pretty barren yeah. place, and it was very stormy. Yeah. But you know. Who knows? All right, guys, it's time for us to talk about what is opening this week. New films opening all the time. We're going to talk about one of the wide release films coming this week. Ashley, which one is it? It is Logan. In the near future, a weary Logan cares for an ailing Professor X in a hideout on the Mexican border. But Logan's attempts to hide from the world and his legacy are upended when a young mutant arrives, being pursued by dark forces. Well, Logan finally opens tomorrow. Oh, yeah. And there's, I mean, what... What haven't we said about it already? <laughs> this movie is awesome. Like, it is awesome. I, like, it's everything you want it to be. 
Um, you know, I, I've mentioned this before, but I'll say it again. When I came out of seeing Avengers for the first time, me and a lot of other people were saying, it's the Hulk that everybody's been waiting for. This is the Wolverine everybody's been waiting for. Not that we haven't had good, you know, good Wolverines in the other X-Men movies. We have. It's just that this is the, the logical culmination in the Logan we've had so far. And if this is indeed Hugh Jackman's swan song, I still think there's a chance he appears as Wolverine in Deadpool 2, but I, think, I don't think we're going to see any more Wolverine movies. I don't think, think we're going to see Wolverine in an X-Men film. But if it is his swan song, what a perfect way to go out. Uh, anyway, Shep, you had a chance to see Logan. Should people be looking forward to seeing it this 100%. week? 100%. See it immediately. If you can see it Thursday night, see it Friday, see it Friday. Uh, we did a spoilers review. Don't watch that until you've actually seen the movie because it's a spoilers review. And we talk about <laughs> all the things in the movie that you have to you have to see for yourself. It's spoilers, all right? Um, I love this film. I gave it a 9.9. .9. I think it's one of the best. Not only, it's not even, I would just call it a, a science fiction film with, uh, with some superheroes. It's not a superhero film. Yeah. I, it feels just like a, it's a really cool Western. It's set in the future. Yeah. I mean, everything about it, is such a fantastic, uh, fanta is a, the story is fantastic, it's heartwarming, it's heartbreaking, it's ultra-violent, exactly what John said, it's everything any fan of Wolverine has ever wanted to see is on screen. I can't say any more than just go see it. Jeremy. Yeah, I'll, I'll take your awesome and raise you an awesome-tacular, John. <laughs> it's, one of those, uh, it's one of those movies where, like you were saying, it's hard to quantify it as an X-Men movie. You know, like you watch it and you're like, I, well, I guess it's in that universe, but I, you, it's not in line with the other X-Men movies. It's its own thing. Watching the other X-Men movies will give you some attachment to a couple of the characters in it, uh, you know, uh, Charles Xavier and Logan. Mm -hmm. But in that, I, I, I don't even know that you need to, just because it's its own, no, it's its own, thing. it's its own thing. It's its own world. Um, it's touching. It's heartfelt. It's, like you said, it's ultra violent. I remember when the first X Men came out, people were like, "I really wanted to see Wolverine kill people." So in X Men Two, Hugh Jackman was like, "You get to see that when they raid the mansion, yeah, I can't." But even then. That's nothing compared to this movie. This movie starts out, you're like, okay, we're here. <laughs> First five minutes, here son. We go. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah, you go full speed ahead. It's one of those movies where, I mean, how long is that thing? Two hours, two and a half hours? It, it, it was long. It was, yeah, yeah, it was a long movie, but deservedly so. It was one of those, I could have gone for another half an hour in this movie. It's a movie that gets better the more you think about it. This, this year is going to have to screw up pretty hard. Uh, or actually, no, it's going to have to actually right. be great in order for this movie to get bumped off of what is probably going to be on my top 10 of the year. Because it's just really excellent and I, it's I, it even had moments where i mean I, I i was doing the the lip quiver thing and i was yeah. like no it's just it's just it's a movie that you don't expect so you should definitely go the see. funny thing we ended up when we saw it we sat actually I ended up sitting beside a couple of fans yes we did and we they said to us afterwards like we were waiting to see if you guys were going to cry yeah, i know it's because like, like <laughs> no yeah i was uh because you know i mean it's 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 a family film you know so i have john on my left fans on my right and i'm like hold your shit together jeremy like just 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 hey let it, me just say it it's Okay, pocket. to cry. Just yeah. you know, everybody cries. And like, hold the, your shit together, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, I said to the, myself, the, the movie's just so good. Like, not just action; it's those emotional mm -hmm. beats mm -hmm. throughout the movie. We're oh, not, yeah. not just the beginning, not just the middle, not just. The, it's got these great emotional beats throughout the movie. You're, now, Mark, I know you were one of the few privileged people who got to go see, and I know you're really excited about seeing Wolverine, uh, Logan. I mean, so uh, your experience watching uh, Logan? Well, John, I also cried during y'all screening of Logan because I was in St. <laughs> Louis while it was happening. I haven't since. He's the guy with the Claws. I can't <laughs> wait to see this movie. And this is how excited I am, and maybe you guys can help me make this decision. So I have a stack day of movie watching tomorrow. I know it's not exactly going to the coal mines, but it's a lot of work. I got to see King Kong tomorrow, and then I go right from King Kong to go see Beauty and the Beast, Ooh. Tales Old as Time. And then do I go from that and do I triple feature it? By running off to a movie theater to see Logan around 10 30, yeah. 11 p.m. Absolutely. Yeah. Hell Absolutely. Yes. yes that do. is the best that way to end any day. film. Yeah, that is an amazing <laughs> triple feature. Three, that, that, it could be the greatest triple feature in the history of It so. very well could. It, okay. The topper is the best part. That might yeah. be my double feature of Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection. I got to tell you that. I actually did Ooh. that okay. at one Nothing point. is going to ever beat the double feature that Campia, Dennis, and Schnepp did with the seventh sun and Jupiter ascending. <laughs> yeah. On the same day. I don't have that's, those kind of that's, expectations. That's unbeatable. 
evil in a different kind of area. We'll just I'm just saying, that. I get to see, I get to see Kong, I get to see a beast, and I get to see Wolverine in a day. I don't think that I can pass that up. It's going to be a two large. That's a experience. triple that's feature. A, double a, features yeah. on District Nine and Glorious Bastards was my favorite double feature ever. I'm going to triple. That's great. I'm going to call that day Tri Beast. Those are tri three beasts you get <laughs> to yeah. see that day. That's, oh my that's God. Tri Beast. That's I'm Tri Beast. Gonna, I'm going to walk out of the theater just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> just angry sniffing like I'm in trouble yeah. alright guys we reached that part of the show now for buy or sell here's how this works in front of her ass she's got a few other items in the world of movie news she's going to run them down and those of us at the table are simply going to say whether we buy it or sell it so Ashley what do we got after a best director nomination for Hacksaw Ridge Mel Gibson is back in business with Hollywood and just two weeks ago reports mentioned his name along with other directors as having discussions with Warner Brothers to possibly helm Suicide Squad 2 speaking with Entertainment Tonight Gibson confirmed those talks saying he was on a first date with the studio I just met some guys about story points. It's not a done deal or anything, but it's just fun to shoot the bull when it comes to stories. And if we can elevate any kind of concept, it's good. We'll see. Schnett, based on Gibson's comments, do you buy or sell him ultimately signing on to Helm Suicide Squad 2? Well, I mean, coming from just a, a director's point of view, I think he's an incredible director, and he's going to add to anything that he comes on board as a director to. Uh, am I worried about, you know, how is he going to portray the supervillains? Not really. I think he's going to ground them in a way that maybe the first film wasn't able to, where they had the Enchantress and all this kind of uh, sorcery and, and special effects when you're really talking about human beings. I know they're meta-humans, but I would like to see the Suicide Squad up against even worse villains, but like more human villains, so that it was more like almost like a raid with uh, with the Suicide Squad is what I'd like to see. And I'd, you know, I'd love to see the return of the Joker and have him be more central-themed. I don't know. I, I'm not against it. When I first heard about it, I was like, eh. But the more I keep hearing about it, I'd love to, I'd love to see at least what Mel Gibson wants to do. So, Jeremy? I think only among the Suicide Squad will Mel Gibson look like the happiest guy in the room. <laughs> it's just a great, yeah. it's a great, great picture. No, uh, like you said, man, Mel Gibson, any controversy aside, dude's a good director. He does great uh, character building. I think he might be what this franchise, this franchise needs a director that can give it some juice and give the characters some weight. Um, and I think Mel Gibson is a director who can do that. Is he the only one who can do it? Probably not. But is he a good pick for Suicide Squad 2? I really think so. So uh, going forward, we'll see what happens. Because all of Mel Gibson's films, you can think of them, and you're like, oh, it was powerful in this way, powerful in this way, powerful in this way. Adding that to the DCU and Suicide Squad, I, I have no objections to that. I think he can only add to it. Mark. Uh, yeah, but you know who else is a great director who adds a lot of character building David to Ayer? the stories he tells is David Ayer. And it's like, <laughs> if you want to continue with Mel Gibson's relationship metaphor, that they're on the first date. You know where most first dates end up? The mediation table for divorce. And that's what <laughs> I'm concerned about here. Doesn't matter how good the director is. What, what the, it matters is that if he's allowed to tell the story that he wants to tell. So we have a guy like Matt Reeves. Yeah, let's get really excited about it. Mel Gibson. Let's get super pumped about it. Let's see where this goes because the only person who's really been able to see this film or multiple movies to fruition is Zack Snyder, and I don't think he's in the happiest relationship right now. <laughs> so I'm a little concerned about that. We're off to a good start. We're off to a good start. And what I said about the first Suicide Squad movies that I love the Suicide Suicide Squad, I just wasn't a fan of the movie that they were in. I think that Mel Gibson is a guy who potentially could take that and make greatness out of it. I just need to see more evidence that him in the studio can work in a copacetic relationship. Uh, just, just springboarding off of that, and stop me if I'm wrong, because I feel like you would know more about this than me. I feel like Mel Gibson's a guy. He's a director who doesn't take a lot of studio shit. Like, if the studio's like, no, you need to do this, he'll be like, you need to leave my room. Sure, but, 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 <laughs> right? but what's to say that, like, because, like, Affleck's that kind of guy, you know, Rick uh, Fumiyawa's that kind of guy. There, there's a lot of people who are like, I'm, I don't want to deal with this, and then they leave. So I think they had good first dates, and then when they realized... Uh, this is a little crazy, <laughs> then they just back off. Fair so enough, even if you announce Mel Gibson as the director of Suicide Squad 2 and they're in pre-production, I'm not going to get that excited yet because I need to see them actually working together as one. You know what I'm worried about? This is my only worry. It's like worried about whatever. It's like I don't want to see the film taken away by the director and replaced by the trailer park kids, you know, adding color mm -hmm. and right. editing like ch hacksaw craziness. <laughs> it, it, you know, I, uh, that would ruin whatever sense of style and flow that Mel Gibson, because David Ayer's other films are not like Suicide Squad. That's actually a good point. That's so why I, that's why I they, hope Wonder Woman is great. And, and Campy and I talked about this on his mailbag show this past <clears throat> weekend, is that because I want that movie to be great because it seems like 
Patty Jenkins was able to take her cast and her crew off to some desolate island and film this movie without studio interference, a lot of the same way that George Miller was able to do that with Mad Max Fury Road. I hope that that continues to be the case for DC, and I hope that Wonder Woman is great, so it sets a template for all the studio heads to be like, let's let the directors make their movie, and we'll worry about tying it in after the fact. Mel Gibson's an awesome director. That's all you got to say. All right, what's next? <laughs> DreamWorks Animation and Universal Pictures have announced Trolls 2 and the return of stars Anna Kendrick and Justin Timberlake. The two will reprise their voice roles in the movie that has been dated for a release on April 10th, 2020. The original was directed by Mike Mitchell and Walt Dorn, with the film earning $340 million worldwide. A director has yet to be announced for the project. Mark Byersell, another Trolls movie with Anna Kendrick and Justin Timberlake. Here's how this meeting went, Ashley. Hey, Hey, do you like art? That's okay. Do you like <laughs> colors? Yeah. Do you like money? I love money. Okay, let's make another Trolls 2. <laughs> Bye. It's going to make a crap ton of money. It's it's not going to further the art of animation, but there's going to be some neat, pretty colors to look at. I'm sure there's going to be some funny lines, too, so why not make another Trolls movie? It makes a lot of sense. First Trolls movie was surprisingly charming. I, I like it. it wasn't one of the best animated films of the year by any stretch of the imagination, but I thought it was going to suck, and it actually <laughs> ended up being kind of charming, and, and I liked it. And really, for like Justin Timberlake and Kendrick, hey, do you want to make a feature-length salary for three days of work coming in and doing the sound booth things? Yes, I do. Yeah, you're right. It makes perfect sense why they would do it. And uh, I'll, I'm will i kind of looking forward to seeing to see what they do with the next, Jeremy. Yeah, Trolls was one of those movies that just slipped under the radar. I had a lot of reviews to do in a short amount of time. I didn't get to Trolls. Then I heard it was surprisingly good. It was one of those movies that held on, right? It was yeah, in the top yeah, five for, for a while. while, if I'm remembering that correctly. So it makes perfect. I'm telling you guys, if you want a sequel, go watch a movie. Make sure it makes a lot of money. If you don't, don't watch it. It's all about the money. Money talks. And so Trolls 2 is happening because money did talk. I like that Timberlake song. I didn't see Trolls. So did I. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to see Trolls 2. When <laughs> Trolls 3 comes out, I probably won't see that either. But I'm glad that all the kids who saw the Trolls, I like the little weird, the Sasquatch dude with the egg caterpillar hat wearing thing, whatever that is. That's kind of cute. Whatever. Make money. <laughs> All right, what's next? <laughs> During the 12th annual Oscar Wilde Awards held at the headquarters at Bad Robo, the New York Daily News reported that reports that director J.J. Abrams spoke a bit about Star Wars The Last Jedi's Oscar hopes and specifically about the chances Luke Skywalker <coughs> actor Mark Hamill has for a possible nomination, Abrams said. I think we're all going to be very upset if he does not win an Oscar and no one more upset than Mark, said Abrams, who may or may not have been kidding given the nature of the awards. He's hysterically funny. He has done comedy. He's an amazing guy. He can do anything. John, based on JJ's comments, do you buy or sell Mark Hamill's Oscar chances for The Last Jedi? <laughs> <laughs> all right, look, I, I, worship at Star, I worship Star Wars. I love, everybody knows I love Star Wars, and I love Mark Hamill. The dude's mm -hmm. amazing. He's wonderful. But, oh, the producer of a movie is saying he's convinced one of the people in the movie he's producing should win an Oscar. I mean, what do you take that? Well, what is that worth, really? I mean, look, if his performance in Star Wars Episode Seven is anything to go by, um, <laughs> I, 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 who's to say? We haven't seen a single frame of Mark Hamill in Star Wars Episode Eight yet. I mean, sure, yes, I'd rather hear J.J. Abrams say this than say... I think the movie can get by despite Mark Hamill's performance. I mean, I'd rather hear him say, talk about Oscar stuff. Sure. I mean, that's great. But, I mean, it doesn't mean anything. So I'm not going to get excited about it one way or the other. So I, I will sell it. I will sell it. Yeah, I, I think this is a lot like the uh, Christopher Guest classic for your consideration where they're talking about Catherine O'Hara's chances to win an Oscar in her movie Home for Porn, which is still being filmed as they're talking about it. <laughs> I, I, I think Mark Hamill is great. What this tells me, and it really doesn't even tell me that, this is me as a Star Wars fan over speculating, is that Mark Hamill has enough meat in this role to be considered for some sort of Oscar, whether it's Best Lead Actor, Best Supporting Actor, that there's enough lines for him. If Jack Powens can win an award for City Slickers, where he's on screen for like two and a half minutes and is dead on a horse halfway through, then there's enough time on screen for Mark Hamill to be considered for an Oscar. That's my takeaway, John, and that's me going way, way nerd deep into speculating. Jack Palance can do a one-handed push-up. <laughs> Don't be ripping on Jack Palance. Ripley's Believe It or Not. Come on, man. <laughs> so what are you talking about? Oh, J.J. Abrams? Look, you know, those guys are friends. They're joking around. This is a big joke. He's, ha he's ha having a little fun with, you know, he's like, yeah, remember how I made you all silent in episode seven? You didn't even say one word. Just standing <laughs> on a mountain all quiet, and then we just cut. 
<laughs> That's why he's, he's like, look, you get to talk. He should win an Oscar. I think it's just for them. They're friends. They're buddies. They're having some fun. Jeremy. Yeah, I think it worked for Alec Guinness. However, I think if Star Wars came out today, Alec Guinness would not have been up for anything for Obi-Wan Kenobi, just how the times have rolled. But I do think if for nothing else, this is J.J. Abrams going, look, Mark Hamill's giving 150% into this role. So for nothing else, I agree. It's like it's the producer boasting about a role in a movie that he's producing. But no one in Die Hard 5 ever said that about Bruce Willis. So, hey, hopefully <laughs> this means that they have faith in Mark Hamill's... Uh, Performance, I really do feel like this is going to be um, a role that Mark Hamill like gives us in a, in a performance that he's really sinking his teeth into for the first time in many years, possibly. Maybe that's what that means. Uh, I can't wait to see it, though. John, what can I say? let me ask you a speculative question. In Episode 8, is Luke Skywalker going to have a green lightsaber or a blue lightsaber? Green. I think he's going to have a blue lightsaber. What? what? Yeah, nice. I'm going to go. Nah, he's, got, he's going green. This is why we get in fights at the office. It's because I think it's going to be green. You think it's going to be green? I think it's going to be possibly his old hilt, his yep. old lightsaber from I, back I was in thinking the day. that same thing. I would, it would be kind of cool if it was blue. You know what? I, I'm going to change my thing. I think he's going to come across an old holocron of Mace Windu, <laughs> and he's going to see the purple. benefits of a purple, purple lightsaber. lightsaber. That's the way he's oh, going to yeah, go. Oh, yeah, because a purple lightsaber is undefeated in fights. <laughs> I'll just have everyone know that my lightsaber in Old Republic is gold. So Ooh. there. Oh, well, there you go. All right, guys. So listen, <laughs> I want to let you guys know that we do this show live every day, Monday through Friday. And since we're doing it live, if you're watching us live, we're going to save a few minutes at the end of the show. Take some of your live Twitter questions. You can start sending questions in now. Just make sure you're following us on Twitter at Collider Video and start firing those questions in. Now, uh, yesterday was a fun day for us around the office. I you guys know, bar none, my absolute favorite animated film of the year that should have won the Oscar was Moana. And yesterday, we actually were lucky enough to have uh, Ali come in who plays Moana. She does the singing. She does the voice. She performed at the Oscars the other night, got hit in the head and kept on going. She was in the <laughs> office with us, hanging out with us here at the studio yesterday. Here's a little look at that interview. Now, I got to imagine, what were you feeling like when you found out, number one, that the song was nominated? Yeah. And then you realize... Oh, so now I need to perform the song, <laughs> and I'm going to be performing when Justin Timberlake's performing his, John Lennon's performing, Sting is going to be performing. Were you nervous about that, or were you just more focused on the fact that you're performing at the Oscars? Was which was nervous? Which was yes! the bigger? What, what was the bigger cause of nerves <laughs> at the Oscars or sharing the stage with those people? Uh, all of the above. <laughs> There's like the, the answer C, bubbling in C. All of the above. I was so nervous. Um, Previous to the Oscars, I had actually performed in front of what I like to call my friends and family because it was Oahu. I was on my island and I was at Neil Blaisdell Center. So that's like technically my first performance. And then the Oscars was right after that. Right. So my first really large <laughs> performance and I was so nervous. I mean, one, of course, being at the Oscars, right. being able to literally look down at the stage and see... Meryl Streep. Yeah. Don't like, uh, you don't know how, like how many times it went through my head. Like don't faint, don't puke, <laughs> pee before you get on stage. Like a mental checklist. It was crazy. And I'm glad that it went so well. Aside being, you know, knocked a little bit on the back of the head. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because <laughs> um, not, we're, we're sitting here watching and like everybody turns, we had a big party and everybody starts did, did she just get hit in the head? We think she just got hit in the head. So not only are here you are 16 performing at the Oscars with all those other big celebrities, something goes wrong. And what we were all amazed at, you didn't even flinch. Like, did you even, when it happened, did you even notice it? Or were you so caught up in the moment? Or, or were you just able to just get yourself back on track? Because the way you handled <clears> that <throat> was incredible. Thank you. Oh, I, I noticed it. <laughs> I noticed it. Um, and it actually had happened um, in the previous dress rehearsal as well. And it was something- So you got hit in rehearsal yeah. and they did it again. <laughs> wow. It wasn't on camera the first time. They had to document that. But yeah, it, it had happened um, in the dress rehearsal and then we kind of got all in a big group and I was like, you know, I know it's crazy. We all have these big stressors, but please don't hit me in the head. And they were like, <laughs> yeah, totally. And I was like, you messed up. Okay. Like, but it was fun. I mean, it was kind of just a, Hey, you're wow. at the Oscars, and things happen. And now I'm known as a Moana girl who got hit in the head, which 
That's pretty cool. I don't mind at all. Now, the full interview uh, that lasted about 15 or 20 minutes with me and Ali Cravalho goes up a little bit later today. Check our YouTube uh, channel for that a little bit later. But I also want to remind you that Movie Talk is not the only show on uh, Collider Video here today. Also, Well, first of all, starting tomorrow is the this year's March Movie Madness Tournament. Of course, it is Villains. We released the brackets yesterday. You can look on my social media for that. Tomorrow will be our first video special. We're going to be running down all 64 contestants, breaking down the four number one seeds and all the individual matchups and direct you on how you can vote on the results because really, this entire tournament is based on your voting. Keep your eyes open for that. I also want to remind you that a brand new episode of Heroes dropped yesterday with Mr. John Schnepp. Our Doctor Strange commentary that we did is now on our channel. You can go and find that right now. That was an awful lot of fun. A brand new episode of our movie trivia showdown happened yesterday between IGN and Nerdist. You're going to want to make sure you check that out. Now, uh, also, I want to let you guys know, it's Wednesday, which is me. I'm going to make a quick announcement here. Uh, Wednesday is normally when Nightmares drops. There will be no Nightmares today. Now, uh, as soon as this episode is over, you'll be able to find a five-minute video with myself, Clark Wolf, and Christian Harloff explaining... Uh, what's happening with Nightmares, but I'll give you just a little bit of information on that right now. Nightmares has been changed from being a weekly show to a monthly show, uh, starting immediately. The first date of the new monthly version of it, we haven't announced yet, but that's going to be coming. For more details, check out that video that will be going up on our channel uh, as soon as this episode is over. Once again, with Christian Harloff, myself, and Clark Wolf explaining the situation and how that has changed. So I know a lot of you have been asking me what's, what's going to be happening with Nightmares. Now you know. Get more details on that video. All right, with all that out of the way, let's get to our mailbag. Listen, if you've got a topic or question you'd like us to address on the show, you can just email us anytime at collidervideo at gmail.com. Ashley, what's in the mailbag? Mike writes, hey, Colliders. I caught the Oscars and enjoyed your watch along. Quick question. With a lack of comedy represented in the awards, do you think the Academy should create a Best Comedy Oscar Award? Thanks for everything you do. No, absolutely not. If you create a best comedy, then you have to have a best drama category, a best horror category, a best action category, a best dramedy category, a best <laughs> animated slash right. comedy. All of a sudden, it's the Golden Globes. Yeah, pretty soon it's the Golden yeah. Globes. So you give, and, and pretty soon then you're just giving out participation awards to everybody. So <laughs> I, no, I don't think they should have individual things like that too. The one exception I will always, and I don't even think there should be a best animated category. The one exception is documentary. I'll give that because it is such a, it is so entirely different from from any other type of movie that I believe in that one, I just don't believe in the others. Mark, what about you? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the question comes from a uh, a warranted seed is that the Oscars just do not reward comedy in the same way that they reward drama. And you can have that, that argument all day long as to what's harder for an actor or for a film to do. Is it harder to evoke emotion out of us, like tears, or is it harder to make us laugh? I think that it's pretty even in that category. So why isn't it more representative at the Oscars, particularly an award show that for the bulk of the four hours is trying to make us laugh, you know? And so I think that you should have more consideration for comedic performances and for comedic movies. For example, you had nine movies that were nominated for Best Picture when you had a possibility of 10. And a lot of people were hoping Deadpool gets in there. That was a pretty funny movie. This was not a great year for comedies, but I could still give you five that could have been nominated in their own category. I agree with John. You don't separate the categories and have a best comedy. What you should have is more comedic acting considered right alongside the dramatic performances. I mean, it's been very, very rare that you get a comedy movie nominated for best picture. I think Dr. Strangelove was nominated. Annie Hall was nominated. As but good you as don't you get. see it a lot. Tootsie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. the, the, the other big problem here, though, too, is this. is Look at last year. What comedy are you nominating for Best Picture? Mm -hmm. you, you're nominating Neighbors 2? Are you nominating Popstar? Though I really like Popstar, it's, 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 but no way should that be nominated. I, mean, you gonna... I, I would have thrown Deadpool in there. I would have thrown The Nice Guys. The Nice Guys is the one film. Everybody Wants Some was, was uh, pretty good. I don't know. About every, I thought I was disappointed in that. Everybody, wa everybody wanted some, John. Except me. <laughs> everybody, <laughs> most people want some. Everybody wanted most of it. <laughs> the yes. sequel to the sequel. You know what? I think I personally feel like 
the Oscars, I like the, the I like them the way they are. I'm glad they did add animated films, be, just because there were so many more animated films being done every year that now it does actually deserve its own category. Because the of the three that were not, or the five that were nominated, there were so many more animated films that didn't get even nominated. There's like there's a plethora of animated films, so it's not just like of the two animated films you must pick one to win an Oscar. It's like there's 30 or 40 that are released every year, and, and you usually get make, to hear about smaller animated movies in that category. Category yeah. that you would not have otherwise heard so, about. So, but with comedy and also science fiction and horror and even now superhero, the superhero genre, which there's about 15 films coming out every year now, I feel like they should have their own award ceremony. Because when you're talking about the Oscars and you're talking about movies, it doesn't bother me that the uh, specific other kinds of genres are not thrown in there, unless, of course, they reach that pinnacle, like, say, Lord of the Rings, where it crosses over and steps outside of the genre that it's in and get, becomes like just an overall cinematic mm -hmm. experience. So if there's a comedy that crosses over and becomes an overall cinematic experience, then it can be part of the Oscars 10 or possibly even win an Oscar. But I, I feel like having those kinds of uh, separations in genre, of course there are horror awards that maybe people aren't aware of. That There are science fiction awards called the Saturn Awards that some people are not aware of. So I think that's how it should be. Jeremy. Uh, yeah, I think you guys, I can't add much to it except for the, for the fact that a drama, will, something that makes you cry will stick with you as a best picture contender in your own uh, mind's eye than something that makes you laugh. So I think that's why uh, the Academy gravitates towards drama. But I would have liked to have seen Deadpool for that 10th spot. Mm -hmm. All right, we're running short on time, so we're going to jump right into our Twitter questions. Wendy, what have you picked out? A lot of people are asking about this, so I just picked one out of the many, and this one comes from Dylan Dalton, who writes, Hey Collider, I was just thinking, could Logan be the first comic book movie to win Best Film at next year's Oscars? Thanks. Considering we haven't seen any of yeah. the other films that will really be up for it, it's impossible <laughs> to say. I mean, it's, so far. it's March 1st. If the Oscars <laughs> were held tomorrow, if the 2017 Oscars were held tomorrow, I would say yes, absolutely, Logan yeah. has a great shot. Look, I when I first saw Captain America Civil War, I said, I think this movie has an outside shot of being nominated if there are 10 nominees for, for, for Best Picture. That obviously didn't happen. Sure, it has a shot. Because I think the one thing that this one has going for it is that when you read, like even critics who generally aren't into comic book films are loving this film. So there could be a lot of mileage there. Win is still a way, that's a so such a long shot. Nomination, it's possible, but there's it's impossible to say when we don't know what its competition is. And the Oscars is not never about how good is your movie. The Oscars is always about how good is your movie relative to the other movies that have come out right. that year. So until we see those other ones, it's impossible to say. What do you think? I Scott? agree. Let's check back in 10 months. Because, yeah. But like as I feel it, it's nomination worthy right now, and I, I'll probably still feel that way in 10 months, but got to see what's coming out. Here's why it's got a shot is because Deadpool came out in February, and we were talking about it. We all got up at yep. 5 in the morning to watch yep. the Oscar nominations be announced, and we were sitting there thinking Deadpool has a chance. So Logan, I, it, from what I've heard, because I haven't seen the movie yet is that <laughs> you, is that it does a good enough job of separating itself from the pack of comic book movies which is something Captain America is civil or Winter Soldier is a really good movie Civil War really good movie Doctor Strange really good they didn't separate themselves from the other movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe from a story standpoint right because they all tie into one huge epic thing Logan seems to differentiate itself from <clears throat> all the other X-Men movies that's why I think it's got a better shot yeah this is kind of springboarding off of the last question we were talking about where it's uh, you know Deadpool wasn't nominated because you know, you, dramas are usually nominated Logan is more in line with a type of movie you would see nominated for Best Picture. The only difference is it happens to have some characters that have been in X-Men movies. That's the only difference. So I think it does have a good shot. But again, yeah, we'll check back in about 10 months. It's Unforgiven with Claws. Yeah. I mean, and Unforgiven <laughs> did pretty well at the Oscars, so who knows? All right, what's next? This one comes from So Bro Ryu, who writes, Forgive me if you guys mentioned it somewhere, but who from Collider Video won the Oscars betting pool? Uh, well, the, uh, Come on up here, Cody. Come on up here. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Cody. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Congratulations. Are the winner of the 2017 Collider Office yeah. Oscar Pool. 
17 Peter out Parker, of 24. Yes. Yes. A very young Tom Holland. Yes. Yeah. Spider-Man himself. Yeah. So. Cody won. It was, it was, it was a heartbreaking moment because we were doing the math. That there was this heartbreaking moment, about four categories to go. Dennis, who was one point behind. Dennis came in second, by the way. Dennis, who was one point behind, asked Cody, who do you got for the last four things? And Dennis realized they both picked the same ones for the last four, so there was no way. So mm -hmm. he actually locked. Cody locked the win with still four categories to go. Like, we need to have a sliding scale. I think like uh, all the categories should be worth one point. I think like a uh, best cinematography should be worth two. Best screenplay should be worth two. Then best director should be worth three. Best actor and actor oh. should be worth four. And best picture That'd should be, be worth five. Producing yeah. the three point nice. shot in the yes. Oscar oh. pool. Let My uh, <laughs> ballot is currently, it fell at some point halfway through the ceremony, it fell under the couch. And it's going to stay there for a long time. The category five, I believe. Yeah, I, I was one for nine. Now, <laughs> Cody, one, point, one, for one for nine. nine. Yeah. Cody, let me just ask you. Don't you wish now that everybody put in 20 bucks instead of 10? Yeah. <laughs> See what I'm saying? <laughs> See what I'm saying? When you're the winner, you're like, hey, wait a minute. So that's Damn. a pretty good day at Steak and Shake, dude. That was yeah. a good time for you. But you know what's great is it was like, oh, uh, La La Land won, Cody wins. Oh, wait, no, <laughs> Moonlight won, Cody still wins. How, yeah. many, how many Oscar pools were like that, though, where like, somebody jumped up because they won their Oscar yeah. pool, and then <laughs> it's a change. So $500,000, a lot of that stuff changed hands on Sunday night because it was staged. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's next, Wendy? This one comes from Zachary Soslin, who writes, Could Aisha in Guardians 2 be too similar to Ronan from the first movie? It's I, I, I don't know anything about it yet yeah. at this point, so I, it, it's hard to say. Could. The question was could? Yeah. Yes. Could? Yeah, yeah. the yeah. answer is it, possible. It, the, yeah. yeah, the realm very, is good, then yes. Very could. possible or not. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Come back tomorrow. <laughs> All right, what's next? All right, this one comes from Matilla, who writes, Hey, Collider Video, now that Spider-Man is part of the MCU, will that improve Marvel's track record with bad villains? Bring on the filthy. Here, No, here's the problem. Remember, I, I keep telling this, I keep having the same conversation with people over and over again. The problem is not the villains before the screenplay. They have good villains. It doesn't matter if the MCU, who's the greatest, one of the greatest villains? Let's say the MCU had uh, Loki. Uh, or, well, Loki. <laughs> Let's say they had Doc Ock, okay? Or, or something along those lines. It doesn't matter. They still would have used the character the same way. In the MCU, Kevin Feige has made it very clear. Our movies are about our heroes. That's what the movies are about. And so the villains, for the most part, except for Loki, has been the one minor exception. The role of our villains are not to be their own grand, fleshed-out, story-driving characters. They are simply The villains are simply devices to push the story of the heroes. That is Marvel's strategy. That is what they plan to do. And it works for them. It means the films can't be perfect, but it works for them. And I don't think you're going to see them change that anytime soon. Getting a guy who's a great, like, look, listen, you could get Edward, the, you know, the anger management shoe cobbler, and he could be the greatest cinematic <laughs> villain in history if you used him the right, right way and did the right things with him. But as long as it's under what Marvel does, Marvel's strategy is our movies are about our heroes. Therefore, the movies are never about the villains. The villains are simply there as plot devices to further the stories of the heroes. And as long as that's the case, you can have Galactus in the MCU, and it won't make any difference. You can have the Silver Surfer be a villain in the MCU. It won't make any difference. It's still going to be that way. Schnepp, you, you and I had lots of discussions about that. How do you see that? Well, the shoe cobbler uh, teaming up with Paste Pot Pete in a true <laughs> Marvel team up villain super movie, buddy cop film, whatever. Yeah, then you, it's, yeah, you're absolutely right. I see Thanos as maybe having that crossover potential. Yes. Yeah. Because they keep talking about him as being the main character. Yeah. He could be Infinity the one War. big exception. Yeah, so I think, you know, and he'll probably be, if I'm guessing properly, he'll be gathering other villains. Like maybe he's plucking Red Skull from that little, you know, little Prince <laughs> Island that he's hanging out on. Like, where have you been all these years? I've been eating fruits and vegetables. I don't know what he's doing, <laughs> but he's still alive somewhere. So, yeah, I could see that happening. But, you know, they don't focus on the villains. You're right. They focus on the superheroes. I don't know why you're doing that. It reminds me of a little incident that happened in the office here yesterday. Ashley Mova came walking in, and we have uh, boxes of fruit delivered uh, about... Uh, Every couple of weeks, these big boxes of fruit. And I think it was Wendy, as yeah. Ashley's walking by the table, and he goes, do you want some? And Ashley, what is it? And Wendy goes, fruit? And Ashley's like, ew. And then she walks right <laughs> I don't understand why you're wasting grams of sugar on fruit when it doesn't really taste all that good. It's like, have a bar of chocolate. What kind of fruit you know? are you eating that doesn't taste good? Yeah. Does the peach taste yeah, that look, good? Yeah. I, I, I didn't want to do this, okay? I didn't want to be on camera today and throw Ashley <laughs> under the bus. But a comment she made right before we went live today 
It, it uh -oh. struck a nerve with me, and I thought it would go away, and it hasn't. Um, what is it? She said that she thinks Dole Whip at Disneyland is oh. just mediocre. <laughs> it's so mediocre. Again, another example. Is that a bar of chocolate? You're going to have so many grams of sugar, have some chocolate. I'm sensing a theme about yeah. Ashley yeah, and bars and of chocolate. And bars of chocolate. Yeah. So anybody wanting to, out there to know how to win Ashley Mova's heart? Buy me chocolate. Just start sending in baskets of chocolate. She'll <laughs> probably <laughs> return your call. So Sinead gets donuts, and you I get, get chocolate. chocolate. That's cool. Preferably white chocolate. There it is. We saved the dark chocolate for Perry. All right. I'm not saying a thing. Right. Let's take one more question today. Sure. <laughs> All right. Cody Miller writes, hey, Cody. Hey, we never see how close. Sorry. We never see how close the Oscar races really are. What if the Academy released a distribution of votes within categories? That'd be interesting. It would be interesting. Every now and again, you will hear somebody say, hey, such and such was actually our second place thing. But they never actually re release the numbers. Right, right. Um, it would be interesting to see. I mean, it, being an Oscar nut like myself, I, I would, yeah. and a sports guy who just loves diving into statistics and numbers, right. I would actually get a big kick. I don't know if the average film fan would Ooh. really get into that. What if it, instead of a gold Oscar, then you had a bronze and a copper? <laughs> well, it's a smaller. You know what one. I think? I think what they want to avoid, and I'm just speculating here, I think what they want to avoid is who came in second, who came in third. They just rather have, hey, these are our nominees and they're all to be honored and here's the one that actually yeah. won. And I, because I, I don't want, I don't think they want a situation of saying, the movie that comes in last place in our right. best picture. I don't. I think they want to avoid that. That's probably why they don't do it. Yeah, yeah. I, I could see that happening. Where if uh, one movie beat out a movie by that much, like, well, the other one only lost by that much. It's still better. You know, you want the movie that won to get it shine. But it would be interesting if Ryan Seacrest comes out and is like, and the votes are in, and it was within one percent. You're like, whoa! Like American Idol used to do that stuff all the time. But I do. There's a part of it. Big part of uh, me wants to see those numbers, but another part of me wants the movie that wins just to get it shine, just leave it a mystery. I like it that it's just one winner because, mm -hmm. yeah, then you have that sliding scale of weirdness, like the gold, the copper, you know. It's like there's just one winner. It's like Highlander. There can be only one. In fact, they should, they should go back to saying the winner is, not the award goes to. Yeah. The winner is, yeah. the one that murdered Alia. Yeah, that's right. Oh, None of you other ones get a trophy. Look, the competitor in me would love to see a score because, admittedly, it'd be weird if you showed up to watch the Super Bowl and all the, and all the players were on the field and then Goodell just says, the winner is... The Patriots. Good night, everybody. <laughs> and it's like, no, we want to see the score. But I think it's the most fair thing is to have it announces the winner. Presumably, that's the real winner that stays the winner. And then we just go home and we we can talk about what might have come in second, but we don't actually know. But no, what is the re I was uh, I think it was last year the year before I was a presenter at the Academy of Web Television Awards, and one of the things that they stressed the presenters and I can't even remember what the category was I was presenting, but it's like you cannot don't say what the the winner is. Don't mm -hmm. say the winner is say. This year's award goes to. Mm -hmm. It's like, what's why not? What's so wrong <laughs> with saying winner, winner connotates loser? But yeah. the others are losers. I know, but and they should be made to feel as such. Uh, I, I, <laughs> it's I their own disagree. fault for losing. Yes. <laughs> you remember uh, what was it? Kirk, uh, Kirk Douglas and Michael Douglas go up, and then he was like, "And the winner is." And Michael Douglas was like, "You're supposed to say the award goes to." And he was like, "And the winner is." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just like straight up, Kirk like, Douglas. I want that kind of Bam. power. Just be like, "The winner is." What are you gonna do? <laughs> All right, guys, that'll do it for this installment of the Movie Talk. Thanks so much for joining. Us. Don't forget, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Be kept up to date on all the great stuff going on over here at Collider Video every single day. I want to thank the guy sitting at the table with me. First of all, right there, Mr. John Schnepp. Schnepp, where can people find you online? You guys can go to Twitter and uh, Instagram, at John Schnepp. I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs> Mr. Jeremy Johns. Uh, you can find me at Jeremy Johns on YouTube, Twitter, Twitter in the beginning and the end of the internet. You can also find my show Awesome Tacular on the Verizon Go 90 network where we do all, all fun nerdy things. We talk all nerdy things. Be there. If you're there, you are a winner. <laughs> right beside me, Mr. Mark Ellis. I'm checking my website to see. It looks like I'll be the Columbus Funny Bone later on this month. I got a couple theater dates too. You can follow me on Twitter at Mark Ellis Live. Our very own lover of white chocolate, dark chocolate, milky chocolate is, of course, Ashley Moba. Ashley, where can people find you online? You guys can find me eating all sorts of chocolate on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Ashley Moba. Happy Wednesday, guys. And our fruit peddling own, Wendy Lee so Zaney. Wendy, where can people find you? <laughs> Not always. I love junk food. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat at Wendy Lee. You guys can follow me on social media simply on, on Facebook and on Twitter at John Campia. Don't forget, guys, tomorrow our March Movie Madness tournament begins. Make sure you tune in for that. For everybody here in the studio and all of us at the tables, to you, thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.
Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.